Hello everyone, Robert Rambles here and welcome to Final Fantasy XIV. I have been playing Final Fantasy XIV on and off for a couple of months now, trying to dedicate time to experiencing the game, but I thought that the best way for me to do that, the most enjoyable way for me to do that, would be to make it into a Let's Play series so that I can share this experience with you guys and get your feedback along the way. I feel like without that feedback, I'm probably going to be missing out on a lot and shorting myself on what would otherwise be a great experience. Also, on my other character, I ended up on a realm that gave me the Road to 70 buff, which I didn't really realize at first was greatly, greatly accelerating the leveling process, making all the combat trivial, and I didn't really care for that. So we are starting on the Lamia server without the Road to 70 buff today. And yeah, I don't think I need to say anything else. I'm incredibly excited to get going. We have about 120 days until Endwalker releases. Will I be able to complete all the MSQ in 120 days? It's definitely possible. I think that we can do it. We're going to find out. Ah, uh, hi, Dylan. A vibrant planet blessed by the light of the crystal. Amid azure seas, encompassing the westernmost of the three great continents, there lies a realm embraced by gods and forged by heroes. Her name, Aeorzea. The annals of Aeorzean history chart the rise of a succession of great civilizations, each one enjoying an age of peace the Astral Eras. To date, all have proven ephemeral. In the year 1572 of the sixth and most recent Astral Era, the Northern Empire of Gollumol amassed a great army at the heart of Eorzea, seeking dominion over all. Rising in desperate resistance, the forces of the Eorzean Alliance met their would-be conquerors in the field. Yet, even as the battle raged, the lesser moon, Dalamon, was plucked from the heavens through imperial machination. From its core emerged the Elder Primal Bahamut, who unleashed his fury upon the realm. The devastation brought Eorzea to its knees and the era to its end. Five years have come and gone. The light of life still shines upon Eorzea. Man labors tirelessly to raise himself from the calamity's ruin. The realm is forever changed, a stranger to him once more. Yet heedless of what lies ahead, he shall press on. Spurred by the promise of peace and prosperity. Amid this period of great change, an adventurer arrives in Eorzea, one whose tale is yet unwritten. I will mention one more thing is that we are starting off on a gladiator as you probably saw. My goal with this character is to tank, eventually on a gunblade though. Here. 
Hear. Feel. I will adjust some sound settings as we get into things here. I know it's probably a little quiet right now. Hey, you. You all right? You were moaning something fierce for a while there. Feeling the effects of the ether, I reckon. You'll get used to it. Don't worry. You there, halt. What's all this about? Inspection. Men, search the carriage. I'm just an honest peddler friend, so uh, don't be too disappointed if you don't find nothing. Mind your tongue, old man, lest I cut it out. Sir, look. Somnus. Honest peddler, was it? Since when do honest peddlers deal in prohibited herbs? You're in a lot of trouble, old man. You'll rot in a dungeon till the end of your days. Unless you can afford the fine. Huh. Business as usual. Amalja! Amalja! To arms! Seven Hells, consider this a warning. Now go, all of you. I love the first guy runs up and just gets like, Hulk smacked across the screen. Phew, that kind of excitement ain't good for the heart. You be careful around them brass blades. Bastards will have the shirt off your back if they fancy it. Like common bandits they are, only less honest. Thank the gods for sending some beastmen to the rescue. Hey, seeing as we still got a long ride ahead, you mind keeping me company till we arrive? Them youngins don't much care for conversation, see. Brent's the name, and Pedalin's my trade. And judging from your unusual garments, I'd wager you're one of them new adventurers. I knew it. Going wherever the wind blows, seeking fortune and glory, now that's what I call living. So long as you can avoid dying, I mean. Ain't no secret that adventuring is a risky business, these days especially. What was it that first attracted you to it? Ah, uh, we're going to hold our secrets close to our chest and answer them with a dot, dot, dot.
Well, if you ain't inclined to tell, I ain't about the pry. Might be as old Brent's a chatterbox, but he sure as hell ain't no busybody. We all have a secret or three, don't we? Me? Dozens. And I'd rather they stay secret too, which is why I don't go sticking my nose where it ain't welcome. Just remember though, there's more important things than fortune and glory. Such as breathing. Ain't no profit in being dead, and that's a fact. By the by, is this your first trip to Ulda? It is? Well then, let this journeyed itinerant tell you the ins and outs of your destination. Ulda's ruled by the Sultana in name, but as most folks know, the Syndicate holds the real power. Them and their monetarist cronies would happily get rid of her grace altogether, but that won't happen while she still commands the loyalty of the Royalists, and the Royalists are nothing if not loyal. These factions have long fought over power, throwing the weight of their wealth against each other, and they show no signs of stopping. Of course, the Lizardmen, that's the Amaja, Amalja? Amalja, couldn't care less about Ulda politics. They have their own interests, see, and they ain't afraid to use force to serve them. They say war is a gift to peddlers, need breed and profit, and though it shames me to say it, I'm inclined to agree. Ah, at long last. Behold Ulda, jewel of Thanalon, where folks turn sand into gold. Deep in the sun-baked south, surrounded by the shifting sands of an endless desert, she rises. A solitary rose amidst the dust and rock, a symbol of defiance. Her name, Ulda. Even with the coming of the seventh umbral era, Hope springs eternal for the mongers and merchants who vie for lost fortunes in this bustling oasis. As the twin faces of Nald Thal maintain their vigil over all that has been and shall be, the present proffers a brave soul. One whose arrival could mark the beginning of a new era of prosperity for the realm. And here's where we part ways. I'm off to the markets to deliver my wares, then it's on to the high road for me. Here, I want you to have this by way of thanks for putting up with my prattle. You never did tell me your name, though. But, hey, here's an idea. Become the sort of storied personage I can brag about having met, and I'll consider us square. May the traders nurture our fortunes as they kindle the flames which burn within us all. For by fire are we reborn. So let's see here, the, this will be a main story quest playthrough, so if I do have to do side quests, I probably won't be recording them if we need them to level up or something like that, I'll just do them on my own. This series will be focused on the main scenario quests, and I will be reading them. Some of them I may skim read, depending on the content and the length. Uh, but yeah, we'll be reading all the, all, the, all the main story quests that don't have voice acting. I know that voice acting is something that there is more and more of as we get through the expansions. But I know at least in the beginning of A Realm Reborn, only a few of the main scenes are actually voice acted. Adventure, over here. I mean you. 
Fresh off the carriage by any chance. How can I tell? Name's Weemond, and my business is known every bugger else's. Now then, what if I was to offer you some invaluable advice by way of welcome to our fair city, free of charge, even just this once? Alright, we are obviously going to go mouse and keyboard. And I'm going to quickly adjust a few settings and then I'll cut right back in. I'm going to move the UI around a little bit, change some other settings, adjust the volume, and we'll be right back. Alright, there we go. We got our HUD adjusted. I love that you can move the HUD around all over the place in this game just as part of the default HUD package. You can do whatever you want with any of the on-screen elements. I think that's really awesome. Uh, I've also turned off like floating names. I feel like a lot of the areas get really congested with the floating names of all the players and stuff like that. So I'm only going to have names up when I target somebody. Uh, that's probably something else I should probably get rid of the tutorials. To be recognized as an adventurer in the city state of Ulda, you must register yourself with the Adventurers Guild. So this is an example of probably one of the smaller side quests that uh, I probably won't read out all the text in these little interludes with the sub characters. He wants us to go over there and talk to someone at the Adventurers Guild. All right, we have our quest. Let me see if I could turn off tutorials. I believe that's in character configuration. Uh, UI settings. Could probably stand to turn the volume up a little bit. The music in this game, if you don't already know, is absolutely amazing. Every single piece of it is. Why, well, hello there. Who might you be? If you're looking to join the Adventures Guild, you've come to the right place. Name's Mamodi, and I own this fine establishment, if it please you. I also manage the Adventures Guild here in Ulda, so you might say that looking after green adventures like yourself is my vocation. And lucky for you that it is, without someone like me to steer you right, you'd soon find yourself out in the middle of nowhere, caught up in business you don't understand. Like our conflict with the Amalja, for example. They've been plaguing the Sultanate for nigh on, oh, forever now. Then there's the Garlean Empire. None can say for sure what they're plotting these days. Only that they are. Aye, the people drink and make merry, but underneath it all there's worry. Worry and a lingering feeling of loss. And little wonder. It's scarce been five years since the lesser moon cracked open like a giant egg, releasing an abomination intent on turning the realm into an eighth hell. So much was lost in the blink of an eye, t'was like the end of the world had come at last. But then things began to get foggy. Everyone's got their own vision of what happens next. Some of them, two or three. You'd think people would remember something like that, but the fact is, they don't. Nobody does. There is one thing the survivors agree on, though. The part played by a band of adventurers who laid down their lives for a realm that wasn't their own. They fought valiantly, and like so many others, they never returned. Deeds worth remembering, I'm sure you'll agree. It's just a shame our recollections of those brave heroes are as jumbled as those of the Calamity itself. 
Whenever we try to call their faces to mind, it's like they're standing between us and the midday sun, permanently silhouetted. I'll bet that sounds poetic to you, doesn't it? Well, it's not. It's bloody infuriating. But even if we can't remember them, we'll not let them be forgotten, and so we call them the Warriors of Light. And they'll forever stand as a shining example of what adventurers can achieve. That's why I welcome new arrivals like yourself to our fair city. All I ask is that you lend a helping hand and try to leave Ulda in a better state than you found her. If you can promise that, I'd be happy to let you join the guild. Alright then, a promise is a promise now. I'm counting on your help to put the past behind us. We need people working and spending and bickering like the old days. And a happy, prosperous Ulda means more business for the quicksand too. Any road, let's make this official. Go ahead and write your name in the register, neat as you can. Well, ain't that a charming name? Just rolls off the tongue, does it? Alright, on behalf of the Adventures Guild, I officially... Please, sir, be merciful. Twelve is my witness, I swear to you. I'll bring you your money. In the East, it is said that even a merciful god might be driven to vengeance if thrice blasphemed. Be grateful you were given a fourth chance to offend. You two, attend to this scum. No, mercy! Well, ain't that a sorry sight, nor an uncommon one if I'm honest. Don't worry though, if you work hard, I doubt you'll end up like him. Just the same, if you ever need a bit of advice about one thing or another, pay me a visit. Just don't go bothering me every time you stub your bloody toe, alright? Of course, I do enjoy hearing a lady muse on the many manhoods of her acquaintance from time to time. I see. Any road, welcome to Ulda. Take a moment to catch your breath and I'll teach you a little about our fair city. Wow, even without the road to 70 buff, that still got us all the way to level 2. Before you go charging off to find your fortune, I have a few basic tasks I'd like to perform so as to help you get to know the place. Okay, she wants us to go attune ourselves to the Aetherite. We'll check that out. And then we're going to visit the Merchant Quarter, and then we're going to check in with our Guild Hall, the Gladiators Guild. Before you go off, a word of advice. While there are more than a few unsavory characters out there who will try to take advantage of you, there are also some with honest-to-goodness problems who you should consider offering a helping hand to. A lot of folk are lured to this city by the promise of wealth and power. What many of them fail to realize is that instead of chasing after Gil the moment they get here, they ought to be making friends. Let it be known that you're willing to give as much as you get and opportunities will come your way. And then she's going to tell us about the smith over here. He is here to help new players basically learn how to play, uh, learn mechanics and how to perform in dungeons, things like that. Alright, the first thing we're going to do is head to the Aetherite Plaza, but we're also going to attune ourselves to any of the smaller crystals that we find along the way. This is the game's fast travel system. It's going to allow us to teleport all over the world and within the confines of the cities. Which is great, because the cities are, are actually amazing, but they're really, really big. So we are definitely going to want the ability to teleport around. It's going to make travel pretty much painless.
And I think, well, let's go back here first. Uh, and then we need to go zone into the other area of the city. Oh, one other thing I want to do really fast is key bindings. Sorry about that, guys. Let me get that taken care of really fast. We'll only take a minute here. I have a, a gaming mouse that has about 12 buttons. Six of them I can easily reach with my thumb. And it really helps smooth out uh, the gameplay experience when I can when I can use those keys, so... That is what we're doing here. Ulda and the zone around it is probably the zone that I've spent the least amount of time in in my, in my brief playing of the game. So a lot of the stuff that we do here will probably be new to me. This is the city's main Aetherite crystal. And attuning to this is going to let us teleport back and basically teleport here from wherever we want. Hail adventure, might you have come at the behest of Miss Mamodi of the Quicksand? Excellent, which brings us to the matter of the attunement fee. That will be 100,000 gil if you please. Apologies. But I do so relish the opportunity to make a jest. The look on your face was absolutely priceless. Ah, but the fact that you were so easily deceived suggests to me that you are unfamiliar with the use of aetherites. Allow me to explain. These crystalline agglom agglomerations tap into ethereal energies and are primarily used as a means of travel to travel swiftly from one place to another. Perchance you have heard of return and teleport. Well, these transportation spells make direct use of aetherites and their connection to the flow of aether. Given that there is an etherite in almost every corner of Eorzea, any adventurer with a mind to explore the realm will wish to seek out and attune herself to each and every one. And that's basically the gist of it. They work the etherite system and the teleports into the lore of the game and the magic system in the universe, and that's really cool uh, to be able to do that. All of our other objectives are going to be up in the second part of the town. You can see it's divided into two main areas. And I think there is an elevator we can take inside of the quicksand. Not an elevator, but a doorway. There we go. Our next stop is over in the Merchant's Quarter. This is where we can buy basically anything we might need. We'll give him our letter of introduction. Oh, Mistress Momodi instructed you to seek me out, did she? Consider yourself fortunate to have such influential friends. I shall be brief, and you shall be attentive. You stand in the Sapphire Avenue Exchange, the busiest and most profitable marketplace in the Sultanate. Being advantageously situated in, a rel in relation to the other city-states, Ulda's markets have ever served as both the literal and figurative centers of Eorzean commerce. All the great overland trade routes lead to our city, and the majority of maritime trade between Vilbrand and Alderand places passes through our ports. Because of this, countless companies and consortia have chosen Ulda as their base of operations. They see to it that this marketplace is awash with merchants and moneylenders day and night. To the south, you'll find weapons, tools, and an assortment of other useful items for sale. 
Seek out a particular merchant or browse to your heart's content, but do try to remain aloof should you find something that piques your interest. Decisions made in the heat of the moment are usually unwise, especially where coin is concerned. That is all the complimentary aid you shall receive from me, and far too much for my taste. Alright, and lastly, we need to head over to our guild hall. We are going to attune ourselves over here. I'm going to come down here and grab the one at the Weaver's Guild as well. It's worth it to run around your main city right away and attune yourself to all of these. Your main city is a place where you will spend a little bit of time. You'll spend time in all the cities, so it's it's really worth it to go around and grab all the Aetherites uh, that you can when you're in town. I'm going to run down here and grab this one. Welcome to the Gladiators Guild. Tell me, are you new to the thrills of mortal combat? Well, whether you are or not, you are new to us. If you would take your place in these hallowed halls, you must be willing and ready to undergo the most rigorous training. You must endure cuts and bruises beyond counting, and like is not far worse. A daunting prospect, I concede, but there is no other way if you mean to take on the blood take to the blood sands one day. And why wouldn't you? The Coliseum. Coliseum? Yep. Coliseum is only the most celebrated place of public entertainment in all of Ulda. Where else could a poor man amass a fortune so vast as to one day allow him to reclaim a seat on the syndicate? Ah, there's not an Ulden alive who isn't inspired by the rise of the self-made man. And there is no truer embodiment of this than the gladiator who wins riches and fame with his sword. What will it be? Will you rise above the masses and inscribe your name in legend, or will you resign yourself to mediocrity and die in obscurity? Uh, we'll, we'll join the guild, if those are our two choices. Aye, I heard Lulusta. So you're Rambles Kelmeris, tis a good strong name. On behalf of the Gladiators Guild, allow me to welcome you. I am Mila, Guildmaster here. So you wish to study our arts. I presume you have your reasons for choosing the sword over all other weapons. Perhaps you think it is easiest to learn. A sword is a simple weapon, but to wield a blade well is anything but simple. For every Coliseum champion to emerge from our ranks, there have been countless disappointments who have failed to achieve greatness. Bear that in mind before you answer me. For I do not ask this question lightly. Have you the strength to live by the sword and, if it be your fate, die by it? Then welcome, gladiator, to your new home. Let's not waste time, shall we? I would gauge your aptitude for the sword. Just outside the gates of Ulda, you'll find plenty of marmots, hornets, and shrews. Slay three of each and return here when finished. A simple task, but essential to your training nonetheless. Now go. That's right, we are going to get to kill stuff soon. Let's teleport back over to the guild first and turn this quest into Mimodi.
How was your tour of the city? Get lost, did you? Ah, well, Elba is a big place with lots to see and do, but wandering around aimlessly don't pay the bills. If you're serious about making a living here, you'll need to remember where things are. So when you go exploring, explore like you've got a purpose. Alright then, all that's left for you to do, all that's left is for you to work hard, make money, and spend it here at the quicksand. Perfect. Alright, so she's not going to have another quest for us until we hit level 4. We should be able to go work on our, our class quest. And then we'll have some stuff in our hunt log as well. So fight or flight is a buff, increases physical damage dealt by 25%. I'm going to go ahead and move that over there. How much experience are we getting per kill? Uh, not really a significant amount. We need to find snapping shrews. We don't have access to our hunt log yet. I, I think we get that after we finish the first job quest. Now the cool thing is, if we really wanted to, we could just pay money to teleport back to town. Oh no, we can't do that yet. Okay, eventually we'll be able to teleport. But apparently we have not learned the action yet. And so you could teleport to any major aetherite you have attuned to from anywhere at all. It just costs a certain amount of gill. And we can teleport right over to the Gladiators Guild from here. Welcome back, I take it you've dispatched the beast and with ease. Rest assured there will be far greater challenges to come. If you wish to master the sword, you must test yourself against a wide variety of foes. To this end, I present to you with this hunting log. It contains information on creatures ideal for a gladiator in training. You will doubtless gain valuable experience should you seek out and slay them. It is only with such practice that you will recognize and eliminate the deficiencies in your technique. 
Your training under me shall continue once the ha ha once the haft sits so snugly in your hand that you cannot imagine holding aught else. Alright, so the first thing we are going to do is you'll notice we're not quite level 4 yet. So we're going to go out. We are going to go out and into the same area we were in and we're going to see what creatures are out there that we have on our hunt log. And the way we know it's in our hunt log is because it'll have this symbol above it right here. Alright, we got our first uh, combo ability, so this is going to combo off of Fast Blade, Riot Blade, second part of a combo. Let's go ahead and try it out. Alright, and that did get us level 4, although I am kind of curious if there's anything else in the area that's on our hunt log. Uh, we should be able to check that. Snapping Shrews doesn't really tell us anything about where they're at except that they're in Central Thanalan, which is the zone that we are currently in. So this could be something that we run into a little bit further out. I think for now we're going to go back in and we're going to grab the next main story quest. Look at that sky. I love the day-night system and the skybox in this game. It's, it's incredibly beautiful. Alright, it even marks on our mini-map that we can now take that quest. It's no longer red. Okay, so she wants us to head out. According to Mamoni, a Lalafell named Papashan may have some work for a, burgeoning, for a burgeoning adventurer. Exit the city through the gate of Nelv and travel east. Find Papashan at the Ulba dispatch yard and speak with him. We are going to do exactly that, and we'll keep our eyes open for any quest lo hunt log creatures on the way. Here we go, let's take on these guys. These are the snapping shrews that we saw in our log. I really don't want my health bar showing up above my character. That's not necessary. Let me see if I can get that changed. HP bar never.
I don't really want enemies to show their health bar either. We can see that at the top. There we go. That is much better. I just, I try to eliminate as much clutter on the screen as I can. I feel like that is a much more immersive experience than if you have all these HUD elements just kind of clogging everything up. Oh, that was the last one we needed. It looks like we only need three of each of the enemies in our hunt log. Well, you certainly look the part of an adventure, my friend. Might you be the good soul Momodi advised me to meet? I am Papa Sean, station master of this humble dispatch yard. An empty title, I assure you. I truly am no more than a tired old Lalafell passing his final years in quiet solitude. Twelve know there have been plenty of both these last five years since the calamity struck. The devastation was vast. Yet now true oldens work together, doing all in our power to rebuild what was laid to ruin. By the sweat of our brows and the love of our home, we have rebuilt Ulda to the grandeur and majesty that you see today. The railways which run through this dispatch yard, too, were born of, a noble, of the noble efforts of a great many souls. But there is still much work to be done. The wounds left by the calamity run deep. Isolated areas beyond our lines to, of supply remain, and there are places yet wanting for relief and restoration. Ulda needs the aid of you and your brethren, friend. In fact, never has our need been more dire. Which brings me to the point, I suppose. I do believe I have some work suited to one of your ability. Uh, let's take... I guess we'll take the plus three uh, overall upgrade here. We are now level five, so whenever we want, we can run back and take our next class quest, which is something that we might do immediately. Let's equip those. Looking good, looking good. Since you've come all this way, perhaps you can perform an errand for me. It just so happens a number of sentries have been sent to guard the area, a dispatch to the, dis a dispatch to the dispatch yard, as it were. They have long been away from the shade and feather beds of the city, and on hot days and cold nights can play hells in the mind and body out here. It isn't much, but go and give them these twilight pretzels, would you? I find comfort food always helps when I feel like killing myself. <laughs> wow. Alright. That got dark really fast. Comfort food always helps me feel better when I feel like killing myself. Jeez. Here you go, bro. Have a twilight pretzel. Feel better. Alright, that was simple enough. Let's head back over and we will turn this in. Take this for your trouble and stay a moment. There is more I would ask of you. 
Uh, let's take the Bronze Bastard Sword, will be an upgrade for us. And we'll go ahead and equip that. And I think we are going to take a break here, guys. Seems like a good place for it. Thank you so much for joining me today. I'm going to try to keep these episodes probably closer to an hour long, just so we can feel like, especially in the beginning when things are slower, so it feels like we actually make some progress with, with each episode. Let me know your thoughts. I always want to hear from you guys. And I really appreciate you being here with me today and all the support you show me. It does mean the world to me. So take care of yourselves out there and take care of each other. And we will see you back in Eorzea sometime soon. Bye now.